Okay, this lesson is about uh, comparative advantage, gains from trade, uh, things of that nature. You know, why does one country export what they export and import what they import? So th this lesson will help answer those questions using a very simple um, example using the two nations or cities of Bikini Bottom and Rock Bottom. Okay, these two nations are producing kelp shakes and kelp jerky. And so what we've set up here at the top is the production possibilities table for each of these countries. And you can see by this, these tables that they, it, it kind of lists out what they're capable of producing, okay? Right now, points D for each economy are the chosen production points for these economies. And so basically, during this exercise, we're going to answer these questions, okay? So which economy should specialize in kelp jerky and which one should should specialize in kelp shakes. Um, once they do specialize, they're going to have to trade each other for what they don't produce. And so we need to find out what should the terms of trade be. And then finally, what would be the gains from trade? So before we start, let's think about something here. Which economy should specialize in which product? Okay, in order to answer that, we have to come up with this thing called comparative advantage. Okay. Nations will trade based on comparative advantage. Whoever has the lowest opportunity cost in producing shakes is going to produce shakes. Whoever has the lowest opportunity cost in producing uh, jerky is going to end up producing jerky. So we're going to have to use comparative advantage. So you might need to look that up again if you're not sure. Um, what should be the terms of trade? Well, here's the thing. Um, in order to have trade, it has to be mutually beneficial. If it's not mutually beneficial, there's no incentive to trade. So we got to find a price of jerky and or a price of shakes that, is, that benefits both countries. And then finally, what would be the gains from trade? So if, for number three, we're basically going, going to figure out what were they producing before they began trading and what are they producing after they trade and are there any gains from that? So let's get started. All right. First things first, what I'm going to do, just to make this more visual, is I'm actually going to set up two PPCs to demonstrate uh, just visually what their economies currently look like. Okay? So this PPC is for Bikini Bottom. Again, okay, they make shakes and they make jerky. They can make any combination of these as long as the, the points of production are on the curve. They can be inside the curve or on the curve, but they cannot be beyond it, as you remember. So they have a possibility of producing as many as 10 shakes or as many as 50 jerkies or any point in between. Currently, they are at point D, which is four shakes and 30 jerkies. Okay, so far so good. By the way, we'll label this point D, all right? This was point A, and this is point F. All right, then we come over here to rock bottom, and we're going to do the same thing, okay? We'll, we'll set theirs up. Uh, each of these have what we call constant cost, so we can just draw you know, a completely linear curve. We've got the two points of production. We've got our shakes on our x-axis, although that doesn't make any or our y-axis rather, although that doesn't make any difference. And we've got our jerky over here. Um, rock bottom can produce as many as 20 shakes or 20 jerky or any combination in between. Currently, they are producing also at point D, which is eight shakes and 12 jerkies. Uh, again, that's point A. Point F. All right, very nice. So the next thing we would have to do is we want to, let's see, we, we wanted to figure out who's going to produce what, and we decided in order to do that, you have to calculate uh, or, or at least find out what comparative advantage is. And so we learned that comparative advantage means, or it at least is attributed to whomever can produce a good at the lowest opportunity cost. So what that means is we have to actually calculate opportunity costs. So what we're going to do is come over here to Bikini Bottom and because all of these points on the curve are all equal to each other, 
because they all equal their total resources, we can go ahead and make the connection that point A is equivalent to point F. Therefore, 10 shakes is absolutely equal to, in terms of resources, uh, 50 jerkies. That means every shake they produce has a cost of five jerkies they have to give up. Make sense? Perfect. Uh, we could continue the math here and say that one jerky then is equivalent to one-fifth of a shake. That's for bikini bottom. Let's come over here and look at rock bottom. Rock bottom has PPC that indicates they can make 20 shakes, which is equivalent to making 20 jerkies. Okay, that's what their PPC indicates. That's what the table says. All resources will equal either 20 shakes or 20 jerky or some point in between. So that means every shake they produce, they have to give up one jerky. And every jerky they produce, they have to give up one shake. So we've set up our opportunity costs. The next thing we do is we just evaluate it, okay? So it, according to our calculations, it costs five jerkies for Bikini Bottom to make one shake. In Rock Bottom, it costs just one jerky to make one shake. So that means Rock Bottom has the lowest opportunity cost in the production of shakes. That means they have the comparative advantage in the production of shakes. Okay? That'll be important. And if they've got it in shakes, that means Bikini Bottom must have it in jerky. Let's double check though. So every jerky that Bikini Bottom makes costs them one-fifth of a shake, as seen by our equation right here. And then back over at Rock Bottom, every jerky costs one shake. So one-fifth of a shake is a lower opportunity cost. So that means the comparative advantage on this side for Bikini Bottom is for jerky. Very nice. So now, let me erase something here. Got some stuff in the way. There we go, got rid of that arrow. All right, um, the next thing, since we figured out comparative advantage, compar comparative advantage tells us that each country is going to specialize in that good with which they have a comparative advantage. So basically what that means is Bikini Bottom is no longer gonna produce at point D. Instead, they're gonna specialize in jerky. So they're gonna move down here to point F. And then in rock bottom, they are, they are also not going to produce at point D. They're going to begin producing at point A because that's what they have the comparative advantage in producing. So they move to point A. So basically now, rock bottom is gonna produce 20 shakes and zero jerky. Bikini bottom is now going to produce zero shakes and 50 jerky. Now, they're gonna trade each other for what they don't produce. So how do we calculate terms of trade? So let's see. We said earlier that the terms of trade need to be beneficial for both countries. So it looks like, let's see, since Rock Bottom is no longer going to make jerky, they're gonna have to buy their jerky from Bikini Bottom. And Bikini Bottom since they're now producing nothing but jerky, they have to buy their shakes from Rock Bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what one shake should cost, okay? One shake should cost how much? Well, if you look over here in Bikini Bottom, every shake they produce costs five jerkies. So if they're gonna buy their shakes from Rock Bottom, they need to have a price that's less than five jerkies. And then over here in rock bottom, okay, every shake they produce costs one jerky. So if they're gonna sell their shakes, they need to get at least what it cost them to make it. So that means we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to agree upon a price that is somewhere between one jerky and five jerkies for every shake. So if we're gonna be fair about it, let's see, what's, what's the point in between, say three? Okay, so three jerkies might be the price of shakes as these two economies trade each other. In fact, that's what we'll go ahead and say it is. So without getting too, without having too many lines up here and getting crazy on this, let's see what would actually happen. So let's pretend for a second 
that the price, let's keep going here though. Uh, so the, the world price of shakes and jerkies are indeed what we calculated as the terms of trade. Okay, so for every shake that uh, Rock Bottom produces, they could sell them for three jerkies, which means they could actually get 20 times three or 60. They could end up getting 60 uh, jerkies out of this deal, which means they could basically expand their PPC way out like this. Okay, and on the other hand, uh, Bikini Bottom, they could sell every one of their jerkies for one third of a shake each, which ends up being some number around 16 and change, like 16 and two thirds or whatever. So basically they could extend their PPC way up here. So they both are able to extend their, their PPCs. So that's a graphical representation of the gains from trade. The real mathematical ones though are these, okay? So to calculate the gains from trade, we have to set up a little table that will make us more clearly able to see how much was being produced. So we've got our shakes and we've got our jerky. And prior to trade, so we'll call this before, this is before they specialized and they were, they were both producing at point D. So before trade, let's see, Bikini Bottom was making four shakes and Rock Bottom was producing eight. So four plus eight is 12. So before specialization, they were producing 12 shakes combined. And then jerky, they were producing 30 plus 12, which is 42. So that's their combined production before trade, okay? After trade, they specialize. So now for shakes, uh, bikini bottom is producing zero. Rock bottom is producing 20. So their combined production is 20 plus zero, which is 20. And for jerky, their new level of production is 50 for bikini bottom and zero for rock bottom. So 50 plus zero is 50. So the gains end up just being the difference between the two. So basically, they've increased production of shakes by eight by joining forces, and they've increased jerky also by eight by joining forces. So that's a, that's a demonstration of how two economies can gain from trade. The only problem, and, and it's, it can be a big problem, is that if you look at rock bottom, they're no longer making jerky, but there's a whole bunch of employees, workers, that, pr that used to produce jerky. Every single one of them lost their jobs. And over here in, rock, in Bikini Bottom, all the workers who used to make shakes they no longer can make shakes because Bikini Bottom doesn't make any anymore. So they lose their jobs. So the gains, basically the gains outweigh what is lost, okay? So the, the jerky manufacturers in Rock Bottom, they're gonna have to be retrained to make shakes or they're gonna have to move to Bikini Bottom. And the shake workers in Bikini Bottom are either gonna have to be retrained to make jerky or they're gonna have to move to Rock Bottom. Either case, you know, the, the, the key is this, all right? With trade, uh, some lose a lot, okay? But many gain a little. And when you multiply the many who gain a little, it's much, much more than the few who lose a lot. So that's, that's basically how we answer those questions, okay? Uh, it turns out then that the Guinea bottom is now going to produce solely jerky and export what they don't need over here to the rock bottom. Rock bottom is gonna make nothing but shakes and they're gonna export what they don't need over here to the Guinea bottom. They're gonna basically rely on each other to do things more efficiently than they could do it by themselves. And so that is why we trade with China.